Aloha, I'm Marcia Joyner, your host for Navigating the Journey. Navigating the Journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices for end-of-life care and to assist people to talk about their wishes. It's time to transform our culture so we shift from not talking about dying to talking about it. It's time to share the way we want to live at the end of our lives. And it's time to communicate about the kind of care we want and don't want for ourselves. Today is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to revisit with John Radcliffe. John will talk about his wishes for the end of life. Radcliffe is on a journey that most of us can only imagine. This is one of the most powerful journeys one can envision. Thank you, Marcia. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. I am so happy to have you. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, I can't imagine that there's anybody in Hawaii that doesn't know John. He has been here since when, 40 years now? Well, yeah, I came here in 1975 uh, to run the State Teachers Union, and I did that for 13 years. Um, and following that, uh, ran for Congress in 1988. Uh, I lost, which was a very good thing for me. Uh, it really helped me a lot uh, in life. Um, and then I settled in and started um, uh, operating the University of Hawaii Professional Assembly. Uh, J.N. Musto and I uh, pretty much ran that organization for uh, 17 years and he for 30, you know. Um, and then I retired from that, and um, I've been a lobbyist for since around 1990 or so. So I do a lot of lobbying, and I've been at the legislature now for your right 41 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Have, have I known you that long? I guess oh, it has I think been. So. Yes. Like, we've <laughs> known each other a long time. A long time. We were doing civil rights stuff together back before when we were trying to get a Martin Luther King Day a, here. Yes. Um, uh, when it was very tough to get people to come out. It was. And we also did a lot of stuff um, for gay rights and stuff when it was not very popular. Are we always on that side? <laughs> uh, well, we're, on, yes. Yes, yes Marcia and I are both uh, card-carrying Democrats and liberals. Um, a so that's just the way that is. Yes. Well, but we want to talk about you today because you are venturing down a journey, a path that most of us uh, have seen, have had family members, but we don't get to talk about it. Mm. Now, the paper said that you actually had your chemo treatment while you were the guest at the legis opening of Last the legislature. Yeah. So how does that work? What, well, what, it, what? It, it, it is something I, you, it was hard to, to see it. I mean, you could see it on me if you looked, but I didn't make a big, big deal of it. What happens is that on, when I have chemo, it's three days of chemo, not just a minute. So I go down on a given day, in this case a Tuesday, and I put about five hours in when they infuse me with these chemicals. And then they take the infusion stuff off and they plug me into a um, machine that meters chemo into me every 90 seconds for two days. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was doing on the floor. I'm sitting there with a, uh, a bag here that, that meters chemo directly into my system and then the next day I get it removed and then I get sick for, <laughs> for a few days and then about today, uh, after all that goes through, that was last week, now by today, I'm pretty good. You I'm look, tired, but I'm pretty good. You look great. Good. I'm pretty good. It's, it, it's a lot of chemo. Um, I don't know how much more I'll be able to take, but I'm... Is there a limit? Right now it's working. But there's no, there's, there's with, with, with cancer, there's a reason that it's called the emperor of diseases, because it has a thousand, a million ways to transform itself, to move itself around in your body and do things to you. So you have to be constantly watching for things. I mean, it might be 
fingernails, it might be sores, it might be, you know, eruptions, it might, uh, skin eruptions, it might be terrible pain in your gut, it might be, it might be anything. It could, you could go, you know, half, half blind and stuff. It, various and sundry things happen to you when you have chemo because there are side effects and, and they're not very, they're not very pleasant. Mm -hmm. um, the question about life here and, and the thing that, that we all should be thinking about is, what's the quality of it? How long can you stand it? Um, I've argued that what I've gone through and what I know that others have gone through who have suffered and suffered much worse than, than even I have been suffering, um, and painful, terrible, terrible things. Um, uh, where was I going with that? I can't remember <laughs> where I was going with that because you know, it gets me in the in the in the head. But but um, you know, I, I realize that that, that 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 happens, and people don't talk about that. The quality of life that's left to you at the end. Right. Are you going to lay there in bed, exhausted and in pain and suffering, um, or not? Can you get better? How long can you stay better? That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I get out and walk as much as I can. I yeah. exercise as much as I can. I think people can see that um, I'm making an effort. I do not want to die, but I'm dying. So I'm not a fool. Um, I think we have to understand what the thing is and deal with it. Yes. And I'm dealing with it. Um, it's unfortunate in life that not a lot of people want to confront this, I guess, ugly fact. Yes. I am willing to do it. I've always been willing to be the guy, if I have to, to do it. So, well, there you go. I'm a cancer survivor, and I know that pit of your stomach when, when the doctor says this is what, what it is. And it's really a difficult mentally yeah. as well as physically mentally to deal with this is what's going on right. and uh, so I'm really honored to have you to talk about it your willingness to talk about it and you are uh, as always which is in your DNA to lobby for uh, the ability to have medical aid in dying yeah. So, let's talk about what is medical aid in dying. Right. What it is, is a, a legal prescription mm -hmm. um, that will allow a patient to personally take that medicine, not being given to it, but have to take it themselves. Um, uh, the, uh, it's not the doctor that does it. You do it if you feel you need it, when you feel you need it, with your family around you and so forth. That's what that's about, so that the doctor doesn't go to jail for doing that, okay? Right. Um, what do you mean go to jail? Well, right now, uh, it's not legal for doctors to prescribe uh, medicine which will end a person's life. It's just not legal in the state of, of Hawaii. It's legal in six other states, not legal here. It's being, um, it's in approximately 20 more legislatures this year as a, in addition to our own. So that's almost half the states in the union are involved in this. And it's, it's something which is moving nationwide because as in some other issues that have occurred socially, this is one in which the minds of America have changed over the years. Uh, for example, we've done a poll here in Hawaii just recently, which indicated that 80% of the people of Hawaii would like to have this. 20% have problems with it. Only about 12% of people in Hawaii are adamantly opposed to uh, having this option. Now, I guess my how it is how is it okay for a doctor to turn off the ventilator in the hospital? How is it okay for the doctor to prescribe morphine, give her as much as she needs? How is it right. that they can do 
terminally sedation, and that's okay. But to write a prescription for a person to take it themselves is not okay. Well, now, it's a let's. We're we're. I think we we have a situation in which medicine has uh, become better over the years to such a degree that we can be kept alive indefinitely for a very very long time. Anyway. Uh, with nothing else going on than artificial stuff keeping you going. That we can do. Uh, but we still have um, a prejudice against uh, allowing people to control their own lives at the end. That is just a prejudice that uh, is in the medical field. Mm -hmm. um, I understand it. It comes with the Hippocratic Oath, do no harm. Uh, but you know, a little common sense would be useful would. Uh, with the do no harm part. And I think doctors have, it, most of the doctors that I talk to support this option. Uh, none of them that I know of except for Chuck and a few others are willing to come out and talk about it. Chuck he's, is your doctor? Yes, Chuck. Yeah. His, uh, he, um, he's the... Um, um, uh, the guy on the suit with me. And then, oh, you know. yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so let's talk about. It. You just said suit. You are yeah. suing. Yeah, we're we are also uh, suing in court to determine what the law is. Um, we have had two attorneys general in the state of Hawaii. Uh, the last one, David Louis, and the current one, Doug Chin. Uh, who have indicated that the current status of the law does not allow doctors to proceed uh, with, with uh, providing that medication uh, and be assured that they were not going to be prosecuted. So we are going to the courts to say, is that the way you see the law? The attorney general opines this. You be the judge, so you say. So, but I saw uh, Mr. Louie. Yes. say, well, he did backtrack, and he said, well, if there are enough safeguards, then he felt it would be okay. Sure, and there are plenty of safeguards. This is very specific legislation. The legislation, uh, you have to be of sound mind. Mm -hmm. You have to have less than six months to live, um, that, and there have to be two doctors that have to say that. Um, you've got to have, you know, two doctors willing to say that they're go ahead with this. Uh, it, it, there's all sorts of, of safeguards in it. Uh, it would be pretty much like the Oregon law, uh, which has worked now perfectly, perfectly for 20 years. Good. Well, we're going to, to take a break, and then when we come back, let's talk about the, the law, what's in the law, right. what the safeguards are. Okay. We'll be right back. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tim Apicella. I'm the host for Moving Hawaii Forward, and the show is dedicated to transportation and traffic issues in Oahu. Um, we are all frustrated by sitting in our cars uh, in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, and this show is dedicated to talking to, with folks that not only we can define the problem, but we hopefully can come to the table with some solutions. So I invite you to join me every Tuesday at 12 noon, and let's move Hawaii forward. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage, which is on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock here on Think Tech. On Center Stage, I talk with artists about not only what they do and how they do it, but the meat of the conversation for me is why they do it, why we go through this. A lot of us are not making our livings doing this, and a lot of us would do this with our last dying breath if we had that choice. And that's what I love to talk to people about. I hope you enjoy watching it, and I hope you get inspired because there's an artist inside you too. Join us on center stage at two o'clock on Wednesdays. Bye. Aloha, and we're back with a dear, dear friend that I will preface his name by saying survivor. <laughs> Thank you. John has been a survivor of polio. Yes. TB, TB. polio, virtually every other childhood disease known to man. Uh, but survived most of it. The worst of, the, of those was the polio. Uh, I had polio when I was eight uh, and was paralyzed for about three months. Um, fully recovered from that, and that was wonderful. That was, that was 
the most difficult childhood thing, but it did help me become a terrific reader. <laughs> Very good. So that's good. Yeah. That, so that's why I'm calling him Survivor, and he's going to survive this also. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. mean, uh, now, in terms of what you mean by survival, uh, is my, my body going to survive this? Um, no. Uh, uh, what's going to happen is that uh, my, my body is, uh, al is already gone. I mean, it's, uh, I was given um, six months to live two years, almost three years ago. Um, I've been working very hard on staying alive. Uh, but uh, trend lines don't go that way. Um, the question is, and people seriously say this to me, well, what about a miracle? Yeah, I'm, I'm, half, I'm open for a miracle. I'm, I'm up okay. for that. Let's I would like a miracle. Good. Well, let's have but, a miracle. You know, okay. If it happens, that'd be great. But in the meantime. In the meantime, uh, I think I've got to take action to, because uh, I know what's coming. Well, we all, we all do. I've been there. Yeah. I mean, I've been we, there. We all. And there, uh, there is an end to it. And there, we one all. Of these, one of these days, it's going to be the end. So, um, you know, folks, it's, and it's not that everybody dies, and. Uh, that's not the important thing. The important thing is what did you do when you were alive? Did you do the best you could when you were alive for the most people that you could? You know, were you helpful? Were you a good neighbor? That, that's the kind of thing that makes a difference. So let's talk about the bill um, sure. that is before the legislature. And if. Us, well, and simply put, what can we do? <laughs> Thank you for asking that question, <laughs> because uh, Marcia and I are both smiling at that, because <laughs> this is an organizing uh, question. If you believe that you have a right to determine, under certain circumstances, your own method of death, uh, because of pain and suffering and things that cannot be otherwise prevented. If you believe in that, then you gotta organize and you gotta get down to the legislature and you gotta make a scene because they are gonna do a nothing, nothing, unless there's some reaction from the people. They don't care about the fact that 80 to 88% of people in Hawaii want it that uh, Catholics and other Christians are now supported. Uh, it's troublesome to have to take up these tough social issues. So unless people say, take it up, they're not gonna take it up. They're gonna fool around. So I urge every single person out there watching this, if you know a legislator, call a legislator call a legislator, talk to a legislator, every single one of them you know, find out how they stand on this. And if they're against it, move them toward it. If they're for it, thank them and get their vote. Uh, just to let you know, well, you know this, it, only in Hawaii, Arthur, all of the legislators, all the city council people, all of the OHA trustees, their phone numbers are listed. Their doors are not locked. Go, call, be there. If you feel this is something that you can benefit. Now, you know, we, the, it's the, he doesn't want to go, but it's the cancer that's, that's taking him away from us. And so we need to not only support John, but hundreds of other people in the same condition. Yeah. I watched my mother, she had emphysema, and you know, she, you can't breathe. And every breath she labored for a year and having to watch her, because we had her at home with hospice, it tore me up. Just I, Marcia, I got to tell you, again, folks that are watching this, because I'm in this situation now, people call me all the time. And it's the damnedest thing. Um, people are calling me for things that happened in their families 25 years ago that they feel guilty about mm -hmm. today. That they, I, 
people have called me that are crying themselves to sleep at night now what they did or didn't do didn't do 25 years mm -hmm. ago and still with them um, you know that's not right no I mean that's not fair for people and it's just time folks you, and you know, I, 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 say to, I say to the people, ask, ask your own moms and dads out there how they feel about it and uh, talk to them. The, the title of the bill is Relating to Aid in Dying. Yes. And it's HB, House Bill Number 201. Right. Is and there, there a be, Senate bill? There will be a Senate bill. There's a companion bill coming out of the Senate. I can't remember the number offhand. Uh, but it's uh, should it's out now. I think it's a la today's the last day for introduction. I think it's out today. Yes, so. uh, Senator Inouye. Uh, yeah, Senator Inouye's yes, got Lorraine Inouye. Lorraine's got a House or Senate Bill Five something, but I'm not sure. Yeah, and, and the number. Yeah. So, but we do need your support. We do need you to call, to write, to visit, do whatever you need to do. Now, there's also. This is either, you. We this, need this. Well, this is not just. It's really not about me. Yeah. Okay, I'm over with in that sense. Uh, this is about other people. The reason I decided to do it is because I, I knew that other people needed to have this done. And as I, I sit with chemo patients all the time, it, you know, it's it's rough just getting up and walking around for most chemo patients. Mm -hmm. uh, so they can't do this. Uh, and then, then they weren't going to do it anyway. I mean, it wasn't their thing. It's, you know, I'm the kind of guy that stands on the street corner and says, hey, the people, look at this. I did it when yeah. the Civil Rights Movement, I did it for the Vietnam War, I've done it for teachers, I've done it for university professors, I've done it for all my clients, be fair, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, that's what this is about, well, me trying to help well, others get a fair shot. I think that just seeing you willing to talk about it, willing to be vulnerable, willing to put yourself out mm -hmm. there so that the rest of us can say, yeah, here's somebody that really knows what they're talking about. It's not somebody that says, well, if. Right. No, this is real. Your, your listeners might be interested or watchers might be interested to know that I also spent 10 years on the Employee Union Health Fund Trust Board. Um, some of that time as the chair of, the, of that. And that's a, the largest public sector uh, health trust in the state of Hawaii. Um, and so I know a good deal about how health insurance works and, and, and what it's about. This is extremely costly uh, for the state as well. Uh, I thank God that uh, I have uh, Medicare and, and am able to, you know, to get through this uh, because I I'm also have insurance. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have insurance, uh, this wouldn't be an issue because it's costing, uh, to keeping me alive is costing thousands of dollars a week. You know? Yes, nationwide statistics say that Medicare spends more on people at the end of their yeah. lives and all of their lives. And it's estimated that one day in the hospital with what you're doing is a $10,000 a day. Oh yeah, and I've been in lots of days. Yes. So, I've been in lots of days, so I've, yeah. Um, now, oh. now let's, let's separate this. We don't want you to think that, oh, it's costing so much money, so we're going to get rid of grandma. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's do not <laughs> confuse the issues. Go back and look at the legislation. Yeah, the legislation yeah. is very clear. <laughs> yeah. So this let, isn't something that somebody does to somebody. Let, yeah. So let's <laughs> let's let's clean that up. Don't don't think for a moment that you often hear that. I know. Yeah. If you, you, if know. you oh, well, we couldn't do that, you know, because okay. yeah. 
So no. I wouldn't trust my own siblings. Uh, oh dear. <laughs> uh, well, but seriously, Grandma's estate is gone by the time you get through this, the medical cost. We're not talking about Grandma. So we're, so just... we're not talking. So we're not doing that. Okay. So don't go there. Don't even think about that. This is your choice that you get to do for yourself, and nobody else gets to make that choice. Nobody else gets to make that decision. So right. don't let anybody scare you and say, oh, we're going to do this. No, this is your choice, and it is about your choice. It is about each one of us. We get to choose who we're going to marry. We get to choose who we go to school with, when we go to this place, when we go on vacation. We get to choose. So we should be allowed to choose when the illness has taken the quality of life away from you, when there is no choice, when there's nothing else that medical can do for you, you need to be right. able to make that choice. So right. without, we, this, without this choice, my end, my choice is, uh, is, is going to be what, the, what, what I'm left with, which is starvation. Well, don't do it yet. <laughs> we need you for uh, a while. So listen, please. I'm a self-starter. <laughs> <laughs> not, not yet. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. And we look forward to seeing you again next Wednesday at the same time and same place. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to join us as we navigate the journey, the journey to the end of life, the journey of looking at our possibilities of choices and options. And this is a conversation. We want you to join us in this conversation as we visit with people of different traditions, different religions, and different cultures and see what they do toward the end of life. It is a wonderful time to enjoy, to talk about things that we don't usually talk about and that we should talk about before the intensive care, as well as the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room is health care. And we really need to look at that as we approach the end of life. So join us as we navigate the journey. Aloha. <laughs>